Back in the 90s, James Cameron was working on his own Spider-Man film and it would have been very different than anything we've seen, but a tangled web of litigation and financial issues meant that it never came to be. I'm Greg Elliott with Screen Rant and this is what James Cameron's Spider-Man movie would have looked like. So let's go back to 1990. It was a simpler time. Gas was about a buck 15 a gallon. Chris Rock and Adam Sandler had just joined SNL and Carol Co Pictures bought the rights to Spider-Man and hired James Cameron to write, direct and produce it. Cameron actually submitted two different versions of a Spider-Man script to them, one complete screenplay that he co-wrote with a college-age Peter Parker and Doc Ock as the villain, and another 47-page scriptment that had Electro as the big bad, and it's, well, pretty different. This Spider-Man would have been quite a bit more adult than what we're used to. It had some strong language, a kid he's chasing falls off a fire escape and dies, he robs a drug dealer, but the weirdest thing by far is the seductive Spider-Dance mating ritual he performs for Mary Jane before webbing her to the Brooklyn Bridge and making sweet spider love to her. Seriously. So the next obvious question is, who would have played James Cameron's sexy Spidey? Well, the movie never got far enough along to actually have an actor officially attached, but since it's a James Cameron film, of course, Michael Bean was on the list. He was in his 30s at the time and was reportedly a frontrunner for the first version of the script, which had a slightly older Peter. But when they changed focus to the scriptment, where Peter was still 17, Cameron wanted Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio later said he did have, quote, a couple of chats about the movie, but things eventually all fell apart, and we'll get back to that in a minute. So in Cameron's scriptment, Electro was the main villain, but he had a totally different backstory than in the comics. Instead of Maxwell Dillon, an electrical lineman who got struck by lightning while working, this Electro was a businessman named Carlton Strand who ran into the lightning field art installation in New Mexico during a storm and got zapped, giving him Electro powers. Sandman was also in it, but again, completely different from the comics. Here, he's simply known as Boyd, a maintenance guy working at a secret military project where scientists were messing with quantum physics, and of course, something goes wrong and there was an explosion which transubstantiated Boyd's body with sand. After this, he goes out and starts robbing banks until he's later recruited by Strand as his hired muscle. Cameron's scriptment ends with Electro kidnapping Mary Jane after Peter turns down an offer to join his super gang, even after being offered a pallet of $250 million in cash. A big fight ensues, Sandman gets hit by one of Electro's blasts and turns into a molten glass statue, and Strand gets slammed into the side of a building and dies. Peter then scatters the $250 million over the city, reveals his identity to Mary Jane, and then for good measure beats up Flash Thompson, who's called Nathan McCreary in this for some reason. So, why didn't this film get made? Well, it's pretty complicated. Marvel initially sold the Spider-Man film rights to Canon Films in 1985, which was later bought by Pathé Communications. Producer Menahem Golan took the rights with him when he left Pathé and then started 21st Century Film, but then sold the rights off three different ways. Carol Go got the theatrical rights, Sony Columbia got the home video release, and Viacom got the TV rights. In 1995, MGM acquired 21st Century Films' entire library, Spider-Man script included, and then they sued Marvel, Sony, and Viacom to get the rights back. But Fox said that they had exclusive rights to Cameron as a director under a pre-existing contract, and after trying and failing to convince them to buy the Spidey rights, Cameron gave up on it altogether and went to go make Titanic. By the time everything was said and done, Marvel, 21st Century Film, and Carol Co. were all bankrupt. The film rights were given back to Marvel, who then sold them to Sony Columbia in 1998 for seven million dollars. And well, the rest is history. So there you go, the Jim Cameron Spider-Man film that never was. I hope you found this interesting and keep coming back to Screen Rent for more tales of Hollywood's big what-ifs. I'm your friendly neighborhood, Greg Elliott, and I'll see you around.